Let's move along because we are running out of time. Another question over here. Dr. Lennox, St. Augustine said that uh, reason is the enemy of faith. And I would like to ask you a question with regards to original sin. Why would you choose to worship a creator God who forbade man to actually eat from the uh, tree of knowledge, one which you have obviously eaten from because you are a rather knowledgeable man, why would you choose to worship a, a, this sort of deity who would have kept you dumb? <clears throat> That's a very good question. <laughs> I'll tell you why it's a good question. I, I notice it was asked originally by a snake. <laughs> is not implying any offence at all. None taken. Because, because, well, let me try to answer your question. The story in Genesis fascinates me because it is a story that defines for us what life really is. It defines it at its various levels from the physical to the aesthetic to family life to work and the highest thing in life according to that story is a relationship with God that's morally determined. And the issue was whether human beings could trust God or not. So there were two trees, as you know. The scene shows us the basic minima necessary for a moral being. Something forbidden, but freedom to take it. Now what was the issue? The enemy said, uh, has God really said you shan't eat of all the trees in the garden? Nonsense. And then he pointed out what you've pointed out to me. God wants to suppress you, you see. He wants to keep you down. It'll cripple you intellectually, aesthetically, and everything else if you go for this tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so they did, and they ate the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. There are two ways of knowing good and evil. Notice not a tree of knowledge, by the way. God was very In Hebrew, keen. it's called the Etz Hadat, and Dat means knowledge, not good yes. or evil. And is good or evil not mentioned? No, it is not. At all? Not okay, I, I stand corrected there. Um, I'd like to find out about that afterwards. But the fact that God is clearly not against knowledge is clear elsewhere in that very text. Because God actually started science by encouraging human beings to name the animals at the beginning of Genesis, which is what we call taxonomy. Now, to just very briefly wrap up on this, the notion that believing in God keeps you down is very common today. I was told when I was 19 by a Nobel Prize winner, he said to me, do you want a career in science? I said, yes, sir. He said, give up this childish notion of belief in God. It will cripple you intellectually completely, and you'll never make a career in science. I quietly said to him, sir, what have you got to offer me that I haven't got? And he talked about emergent evolution. The answer to your question, though, is this. Is God, do I worship a God who wants to keep me down? Tell you the kind of God I worship. I worship the kind of God who made me in his image and coded himself into humanity, came into our world to provide a basis through his death and resurrection that I could co become something that I was not by creation, and that is a son of God. And the basic message of the Christian faith is a magnificent one, that God is prepared to give the individual who trusts Christ his very life, and that that person rises in that sense and is given all the potential of God to be able to enjoy his friendship. The capacity of enjoying friendship with God is the biggest thing in my life, and it will be the biggest thing eternally. The notion that God is trying to keep us down is actually the original lie.